like gonna see here okay i was gonna say meepo maybe not as much anymore i still think it could work but you know both like meepos and tas um just anti-mage bursty heroes even oh uh, let's see what else there is kind of like that idea like the, the ta to an extent something like mm -hmm. ta and uh i don't know like what's your final pick at that point do you need to carry them ah uh, they could pick some let's see here i don't know if you want life stealer because then you had that similar issue you had last game like the Beastmaster is a good yeah. kind of bridge but I think the biggest issue we saw last game is that you build this armlet and you want the death soul oh, life I feel like the, the life stealer is he's too immobile to play up against anti mage I mean there are something yeah. like yeah okay and they uh, Kunka Kunka is it's a nice hero I mean sure there's the X versus the uh, sorry the the shield versus the X but it's hard to reliably always get that off especially since the range on the X is so high that sometimes you can just come out of fog and yeah, it's it's a good hero at catching uh, anti mage. I also think uh, GPK is quite the the Kunga player. Yeah, quite the popular player. Everyone wondering where he's going to go. Latest rumors now suggested maybe a move to Prodigy. I think uh, Elias is the other one that's rumored as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, overall very good in this game. Like you mentioned with the anti mage, it's also against the Underlord. Also, you know Chen. It stops those. You know you can screw those shenanigans when they try and rotate around the map because that's something Khan has a lot of right now. Is mobility. Every single one of these heroes contributes to that kind of motion across the map. Yeah. So interesting here. Now the final two pickups. Uh, who is it that has the last pick here? Who Phoenix it was first Khan. pick? So Khan have the last pick. Yeah. Right. I'm. I'm gonna yeah, blow okay, your that... mind. By the way. See mm -hmm. the center of the screen? See those little, little lines oh, and yeah. arrows? Right. Boo. Right. So right, simple people right, like right. me can keep track of it because we'll never gotcha. remember. Yes, yes, that's true. Um Yeah, okay. So that kinda I feel like that kind of removes some of the options there then from, from Team Unique. So yeah, Team Unique there anyways just looking for a carry. What what do we got here? There are not that many heroes, I think, that are... I, I, another thing about anti is that he doesn't have that many... Uh, like, uh, right now, I think he doesn't have too many bad carry matchups. Hmm. That That's one of the things, too. Oh. And most of them have, like, been banned out, right? If we mm -hmm. look here, things that would work well, maybe you could think about a TV, a Faceless Void. Yeah, exactly. Well. I think Faceless Void, is he's still... He's gone. I think yeah. potentially TB... Sven is another one that comes to mind. TB's gone as well. Was, like this funny part is Team Unique, the ones that got TB rid of both the Void and the also TB. Also gone. You're right. Yes. No. Sven you know what's still sad? there? Like if Ursa if Drow could potentially. I was gonna say if Drow hadn't been banned, right? Uh -huh. You could have picked that. And it's Hello Kitty. It could have had the Drow skin. Oh, that's the that's the big place. The combo. The right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, it's not gonna be. No, no keys. Keys on the other no side. Drow. Yeah, I mean, potentially Ursa, maybe Sven. There's also a troll. Um, what else? What else is there? Yeah, there's not, there are not too many heroes anymore. Do you think maybe troll gets a little bit too bad, right? Like, usually when you think of troll, you're like, am I screwed over if I press battle trance? And, like, they have a mm. lot of control. They could bait you. You mean, like, the pit? Yeah, pit. Yeah, they, they definitely arrow. have quite a bit of control. It's just one of those not the Sven. It's just one of those heroes that, you know, like you just want some hero that's able to man fight the anti mage, right? That's kind of the the idea behind these most of these heroes. I, I think uh, you just want something to be able to, to kind of stand up to him and not just feel like they're losing. Um, and there just aren't too many of those. I think that's why, like, both like Troll and Ursa are, are, are okay. Mm. There's some, not sure. They, PA. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say yeah. PA. Have, PA could potentially. Not hero we expert. see as much of these days. Mm -hmm. and no. Accelerant instantly can't go. Wait, Magnus wasn't banned? Oh, all right, that's an insta pick. Hmm. Wondering who got the better side of this in the end, actually. I mean, I'm, I'm tempted to say Khan. But that Magnus is obviously going to be very effective with the AM. Yeah, that's uh, gonna be a mid mag there, and hmm. yeah, no, I I I I can definitely see it. 
Carl could do well here uh, with the Magnus. I mean, I, I, I personally, I think that the, I think the players on Team Unique are, are just, from kind of my point of view at least, I feel like they're just better players. But I, I kind of like this, um, both the Antimage and the Magnus. This, this could definitely work here. I think the Underlord Mirana lane is is quite strong, and I feel like. This Phoenix PA lane might might struggle quite a bit. Just Underlord does not really care, I think, that much about the PA. Sure, the Phoenix can be a little bit annoying, but the PA doesn't really have any sort of you know acceleration to help him farm. Whereas Anti Mage is going to have this empower, and I feel like he's just going to be quite far ahead. Unless, I mean, maybe GBK can can pull something out of the hat, but yeah, we'll just have to see. I think it's also that kind of like what what is your item build in this game as a PA, right? You really want a BKB because of uh, the passive on Underlord, but at the same time, you're still going to be up against this RP potential, right? And the follow-up stuns could be pretty condemning. Yeah, no, for sure. Question but, here is, I mean, most likely you're still just going to go Battle Fury on the end mage. Yeah. Uh, it's just you don't really want to rely. It. Yeah, uh, I, I did see, I think it was yesterday, I, I saw actually a game where not C9, but five men were playing, and Ace actually went for Mask and Madness on anti -Mage, something that I haven't seen. Really? Um, yeah, but he has always been one of those innovators when it comes to items, so... I do feel like uh, Mask and Madness is a bit underrated at the moment, right? Like, when you figure heroes that pick it up, what, Jug, I think is the primary... Uh, not Jug, sorry, um, Void. Void would be the primary that comes to mind. Most mm -hmm. other heroes, you're kind of like, eh, why would you? But they have slightly tweaked it over the patches to be at a point where... It's deceptively valuable. Yeah, no, for sure. Mask of Maybe, maybe we're gonna see a Mask of Madness on PA. Maybe it's kind of the accelerator for for her. Yeah, dude. You know, you just jump in. You've got the attack speed from the Beastmaster. Your attack speed from your mom. You don't have to worry about jumping Oops. after a target. They're already dead. Boom. What the f just happened? No, I don't think it's yet. I don't, I don't think it's the game for that. Probably Battle Fury into. I want to say BKB. Like, stats resistance is very good in this game as well. On the PA? Yeah. I mean, you, you most likely just go for the standard Battle Fury, this, so BKB, this, the, it seems to be like the kind of the go-to from, from for Phantom Assassin, I think, in general. Yeah, because when you look at the damage that comes out from Khan, a lot of it is fixated around that magical side of things for quite a while. Until they yeah, get two or three items sure. on their cores. Yeah, I mean, Khan don't... Uh... Yeah, exactly. Uh, un until like the anti mage and the Magnus get a bit bigger, they they pretty much rely on this magic damage. Yeah. Um, one thing is, I think, I think, like if the Phoenix manages to get to to level twelve and you know even potentially even eighteen, then I think it it, it could be quite a nice Phoenix game. And there is only this position for Mirana, and you might have other duties at that point. So it might not be the easiest thing in the world to to kill this egg once it goes a bit later on into this game. Also, when you when you think about Phoenix and like the way you want to play, like it's not simple as going, oh, the enemy team's got like kind of life steal or they got a Marana. You got to think about the layers of protection that Unique have, right? And when you look at the Kunker plus the Beastmaster, they're very capable of just instantly locking down whoever jumps forward and nominates themselves to eliminate the egg. Yeah, and and one cool thing here that that Kana, Kana is doing is that they are putting this Chen down here with the Anti Mage against the gonna be the PA and Phoenix lane and the Underlord is just he's just gonna get to sit top against this uh, Beastmaster or Spirit and you really don't care like they can't really do much to you so you're just gonna sit up here uh, eventually maybe the Earthblood will go pull some waves or something try to deny some of the XP but I think this is quite a nice idea from Khan yeah and then of course you've got this Marana that's kind of free to rotate she can kind of park herself in the Radiant Jungle to hit creeps if need be and then that's also going to be you scouting out valuable creeps for the chain alongside that. Yeah, okay. So they're just oh, going to rotate the ground at the top. And it's now... got everything I said. Yeah, now though, when they leave, uh, potentially, yeah, exactly. We're just going to see the anti mage port to top. He does and not want to face this bird spirit kind of tri lane. But now they kind of have to bring like the phoenix top or something because. I think Beast does not want to sit up here alone against Antimage Mirana, although Antimage Mirana is definitely not the strongest lane, so I'm not really sure why they decided to, to bring the Mirana up that early. I think the Underlord was just fine on his own, and maybe the Antimage was just not happy in the bottom lane anyways. 
I thought you would have been pretty content, right? Because you have the divine favor, you got the headdress. Yeah. No, for sure. I, I I thought so too. I feel like he should be okay, but... <laughs> Naive's like, I don't like this being so easy. Give me the Beastmaster. Beat me. Hit me harder, little boar. And it will, it's soon. Because he's almost got that level 3. Uh, DPK is uh, putting on a lot of pressure on this Magnus here in the mid, mid lane. Nier yeah, already attempted to skew a bat, but it failed as well. Which means early on he's gone for the 1-1-1. One, one, one. He's not really able to combat the cleave that GPK has already. Yeah, I mean, if you want to be really cool, you could always just... If you want to predict the, the, the skewer, you could always just try to X yourself. Mm. However, if he fakes it, then you're kind of cool. in a shitty position. It hurts, but GPK is able to walk it off. This is just kind of going to be how that lane goes, though. They're both too bulky to die that easily unless the support rotates. Oh, and he dodges it. Very nice by Mio, actually, there. Dodging that. Sidestepping the, the Tidebringer. You more top. Easy, easy. At what point do you become very unhappy as a Beastmaster that you've kind of just been left to your own devices? Oh, I think he is mid. Quite, quite unhappy. I think... Mio is going to be happy to still be alive in this mid lane, but I don't know if it's going to be for long. He's got the ball to heal up, so GPK has to back away. Yeah, and uh, I, I think he is. I mean, he's he's okay for now. I think that the one thing is, like, actually, you look at the PA, the PA is quite happy in the bottom lane because, I mean, the Underlord did get the tri lane treatment. And so PA has gotten off to a pretty decent start, and then Underlord is still lagging a little bit behind. But, and uh, yeah, overall, now the the, the Earth Spirit is gonna rotate to top and help out his his beastie boy. Yeah, oh, and they should maybe be able to make something happen at this point, right? You've got level four on BZZ, so two points in the attack row as well as the level two boar. Uh, I don't know if you can make kills happen, but I think it's more just about making sure his AM isn't free farming at this stage because both these heroes can escape the boars. Yeah, and the thing is, uh, this Beastmaster once he gets more level, like he he just needs his levels, right? That's kind of what he needs. If he gets to level 5, it's going to be pretty annoying for anti to just sit here, even though he has... Well, now the Mirana just left him, but this lane can get annoying for anti -Mage if the Beastmaster gets more levels. There's just kind of a, a lane of the supports coming by, waving, going, how you doing? And the core's responding, not too bad. And they're taking that as a, okay, you can go roam, rotate, go elsewhere. Yeah, and I'm I'm not really sure kind of uh, what the... I don't know, I feel like, I feel like the also... I haven't really seen any impact of any of the supports so far in this game. I feel like they've just... I mean, sure, we're early on in the laning stage, but I feel like like they've made a lot of rotations, but none of them actually have made sense. And yeah, it just it looks a little bit awkward. Uh, this Earth Spirit has not really accomplished anything. I am not sure what the Chen was doing or where he was, but I guess Vansker is the only one who's had... I mean, he's had some success in the sense that he at least getting some levels. Yeah. I mean, in fairness, you can say the same about Gilga, right? Like, the Marana is going to just be able to go arrow creeps if nothing is happening. And I guess that's kind of the, the measured comparison, right? Is the Earth Spirit versus the Marana. Like, the Earth Spirit can potentially make more kills happen. We're just not seeing it anywhere. Yeah. And then and, and so far, pretty much this entire game is just like a trade-off farm where, I mean, pretty much everyone is just farming. Antimage is Ooh. slightly ahead of PA. Hello. Kunka is slightly ahead of Mag. And Gilga. East and Unlord are pretty much tied. Leap away. Van Scorch needs one tap to bring him down. Gilgrain ain't feeling cocky enough to turn around. And in the end, Cheshire Cat does get the kill. Corey will be four-footed, though. Illusion doesn't know where Gilger is. So he won't be able to find that kill either. Finally, a little bit of life. Some some awkward rotations, but finally someone actually bites the dust from it. They might get more. Arrow. On to Mio. Nope. Illusion ends up with it in his face as he tried to actually get the combo, but now the boat's going to come back into the Magnus. He does have the skewer, though, so he should just be able to back away. Now that's happening. DZZ goes down the top. That's not even a level 6 anti-mage diving or ready to kill a Beastmaster off. Yeah, I mean, we see there the it's the, the stolen boar from the Chen. Beastmaster was level 5, so that, that boar does slow quite a bit. And BCC goes down. Uh, we do see, however, that the GPK is now starting to apply a, a bit of pressure here onto the Magnus. He's gonna have to do the Walker Shame back to base. And now a DD bottled up by GPK as well, so gonna be dealing quite a bit of damage. 
Yeah, it's still going to be hard to burst the mag for four, right? I mean, this is a 1200 HP hero, but you could instantly just force him back out of the, the lane with the boat combo and a DD. Yeah, I mean, it's not so much about, uh, I think, killing the Magnus. It, it, it's more so about just, just keep harassing him with these Tidebringer hits, and he's going to get kind of annoyed. Especially if you have the double damage, you know, he's going to be taking quite a lot of damage. And You can also just keep farming as this Kunkka. I'm kind of worried about Illusion right now, though. We already mentioned these rotations not paying off. Level 2 on the Earth Spirit right now. Yeah, he, he has to find kind of a, a place to go. And you also see that the BCC has actually opted to just go jungle now. And this... I mean, it doesn't really bode that well, I think. Uh, just your Beastmaster feeling like he's forced to leave this lane. I mean, he wants to be pressuring the Anti-Mage. Uh, I think if they had just, you know, like, if they had just been laning together, this Earthbird Beastmaster, I feel like they could have pressured this Anti-Mage, but he's just been completely uncontested so far. And because of it, he's off to a very good start here. Yep, top of the net worth. Even past GPK has been a pretty damn good time in the mid lane. A little eat an arrow, but just too tanky to do anything. They just want to control the runes. Not that GPK cares. He's still got this DD to fold and ready. You think that's that top situation you're talking about? Like, why don't they just run these two heroes into the anti mage? It's them overthinking we're melee heroes versus the mana break. Uh, I hate it. There's gonna be. Oh, I go on to Mio. And he goes down. There's so that. Final illusion. Yeah, exactly with the DD there, but but also finally Illusion kind of gets to participate in the game, get a little bit of levels there, some some gold. I, I think uh, why they haven't, con I mean, I, I'm not sure why initially they haven't done it. Like now I can see that it can be a little bit difficult now with the Chen with some levels, he can back them up and, you know, Antimage already with this Ironwood Tree and Treads and Double Wraith Band, etc. It, it's not so easy to pressure him anymore, but I feel from the start, I think they could have definitely just pressured him and I'm, I'm not sh entirely sure what Illusion was doing um, at the start of this game. Uh, however, now TPK did, did get the kill on the Magnus, but also the mid tower. And now he's already 1.2k ahead of this Magnus. It's important they shrink that map as well. Illusion, I think shrinking is helpful as he does get fought down. I guess the bigger concern of not applying pressure on a naive in these early phases is when you look at his build, right? He hasn't been forced to get a quick ring of health or anything. Hasn't really felt any pressure, which means he's getting the stats instead, which will allow him to, of course, farm all that much quicker. Yeah, and it's not going to be some, some some crazy Mask of Madness build. It's just going to be the standard. Go into the Battle Fury and, you know, you're going to have the Magnus on top of that. So you're going to be farming very, very fast. Yeah, and that's the big thing. It's not on the mag to necessarily carry this game. You know he's going to find farm, but... It's just all about enabling the anti-mage. When you look at the cores... Oh, the roar stay. goes off. Ooh. And the naive here. Boat through is That's good. Trouble. Rotation from GPK on point. They get the kill in the AM. Much needed one. Yeah, and I'm not sure that should have happened. I mean, he had the vision on the master. You know, he could have... I think he wasted the counter spell on something else. So, I think that's why it was probably on cooldown. And, yeah, he pays, pays the price. Off move. Kind of not like naive to usually have that happen. When we compare to the other carrier, though, like he's still a little bit ahead in 19T. 19T, of course, is going towards that Battle Fury as well. I think, you, I think at this stage, unless the mag starts empowering, though, 19T can beat the AM to the, the Battle Fury, right? Um, I'm not sure about that. I think, I mean, it should be roughly even, right? It, mm. it, no one should be really favored here, but naive is going to get help from the Magnus, and so. He should be, should be faster at doing this. That's the big one. If they can snipe out the mag. Speaking of mag, we might shadow. Roll in. That should go to the tower. GPK doesn't have a boat for 15 seconds. The RP connects on the two. Drags them in. The hand of God to heal up the Khan heroes. Means that the only people dying up here are going to be uniques. As they also yeah, lose PA in the bot. Yeah, I mean, 19 team there with a very strange move. He just jumped in to the anti-mage. Who then just man fought him with this empower on it. Oh. Yeah, PA just went down and uh, Gilga gets very, solo as well. Yeah, some very quick kills there from Khan. Big chunk of change now in Khan's pocket up to K. And more importantly, they offset that aggression unique were attempting the top lane. So they're not going to forfeit control of their jungle across unique anytime soon. Same can't be said. 
the unique side of the map though because that tier one did go down which means anti-mage is going to kind of the world's going to become his oyster basically yeah what if he doesn't like oysters uh then the weld will become his around the world in 80 days Wait, why did that not stack did he, what, did he money? Lose, or, the creeps just went back I I like a he, max he aggro really... range i think uh, i'm not sure it's just no, 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 no. It's also more annoying to sure. pull this way than this way, right? Like, this is back. always He's just... like yeah, the yeah. sides are always the most reliable. Yeah. Either way, I mean, you were saying this, you know, the, the race between anti mage and, and phantom assassin, and you know, now with these this death on the phantom assassin, and also this empower on the anti mage, he's just gonna. I mean, he's gonna go get. He's gonna get this battle three so much quicker. Can you zoom in towards it? I mean, if you are unique, I feel like what you were hoping for is more towers early on. Like, they finally get that tier one top, right? But, like, you think about the timings and slowing down that PA with the death you talk about as well. It feels like they want to be where BZZ is now two minutes sooner, which sounds like a small amount in the grand scheme of things. But, like, when you read the state of this game, you need to choke off the AM or the Underlord. You can't let all of Khan's cores freely farm. No, for sure. You want to be stopping this anti mage, you know, if, like, somehow just you can't let him just go out of control. Uh, this this quickly, and yeah, they they they, they kind of with that with that kind of botched fight top, and also just the uh, nineteen teen. Whatever whatever, it was that he was doing down there versus that anti mage. I think that can't really happen, you know. And now he feels feels quite sad here as this level, now nine phantom assassin just trying to jungle some ancients. No, whatever he done was probably uh, only appropriate for people eighteen above. At least he's the right age. Uh, yes. And this is this is sad boy farm and speed. I mean, if, if your PA is behind, like, there's a lot of pressure on GPK to deliver right now, right? That's... Yeah, I mean, how how the matchup goes between this Phantom Assassin and Anti Mage, right? It's it's never that the fact that it's, it's generally never that you know PA is not supposed to be that much ahead in net worth, right? It's just the fact that with even net worth between these two heroes, the Anti Mage can not man fight the, the Phantom Assassin, right? That's kind of how the matchup goes. Just you buy this, so when you have this crit innovation and everything, it's just set up for PA to win that. But I think if the anti mage gets too far ahead, then by the time the PA hits her timings, the anti mage is just he's he's gone. You know, he's already at his next items. He he's already got that butterfly or MKB or whatever it is that he wants. Definitely. And then it's... this uh, man fight, it, it never happens. No, it's that case of like when you when you look at the way that Khan want to play the game, something they really have going for them is that they can dodge these fights through uh, through sheer split pushing, right? Every one of their cores are capable of shoving in lanes pretty fast. And that's why it's really important this these opening phases of the game that you need to get as much of the map as they can before they get to that self-sustained point when Underlord can't be killed when he's split pushing or an anti-maze has Battle Fury and Manta and can just freely split push. Yeah, and speaking of Battle Fury, anti -mages. Battle Fury is now complete. And he's just gonna pull further ahead now. Mm -hmm. Speed up. Mio hasn't had to go out of his way too often to empower him, which means that the Magnus himself has been farming pretty efficiently as well. Almost has that blink dagger at this stage. And and then, like, initiation tends to favor Khan at that stage in the game. Because you look at, like, a BZZ, he's nowhere near this blink dagger. I think that is the level 3 book flying out, at least. So you can at least yeah. get his push on. Yeah, no, exactly. And yeah, Mew is he's keeping Ooh. up. Yoga. Bit of a whoopsie for him. He'll be brought down. They did actually stun the Mio as well. Yeah, he's got the RP, but he's not gonna throw it out. This is not worth it for these small fries. Drags illusion back. No roll for five seconds, but this is not a quick kill for them. Uh looks like the Earth Spirit might get away with this. Yeah, I mean, at least he's wasting a lot of time. Oh, he actually jukes. Yeah. That, oh. No, no, no. Just standing there, like, the watching the fire rain point. down on you, and just you're unable to move. I mean, that's a that's a sad way to go. It's just there. It's like, this is fine. You know, the whole mountain's on fire, but this, this is fine. And you can just imagine 1910 when he's looking at this now, like level 13 going on 14 anti mage. He sees with this battle fury already complete. He's he's quite jealous. It's like, why can't we pick that hero? Where's my Magnus? You know? Yeah, where's the Rubik that can still empower for me and run around? 
boosting me up the whole time. Speaking of that, Magnus, he has the blink now. And it's time to show it off to his neighbors. You know that really annoying guy who just shows off his new car that's better what than yours? That's me up. Oh, oh, he's going on the car. All right, there we go. He wants the big boy target. GPK dragged in. Egg gets thrown down. GPK, the boat come through as well. But Naive is there to clean up the egg. For some reason, Gilga decides to leap into the boat because he wants to feel involved more. GPK still gets brought down. Unique's aggression is completely offset as 19 Teen is still nowhere near ready to fight. Yeah, the, this is this is now it's kind of starting to get to that point where, like, what do you actually do here? I feel like the one play that Unique have is both kind of early on. I think uh, once the battle fury is completed, if they get maybe a medallion, let's say, on on someone, I think they could just go for it. As Illusion is gonna go down here and Gilgir's just gonna pour it out. I think, uh, yeah, the option of getting Roche is something that they can do. Um, but it's just their timings are just, they're, they're just way behind, right? The Phantom Assassin is just, he just reached his Battle Fury at 18 minutes. And Antimage has already got his Yasha. He's, he's gonna have Manta style before, I mean, way before PA gets to this Deso, right? And. Yeah, it's just not going to be easy. You're still playing catch-up. And, and you just don't you have just any... don't have that many choice. No. You, you don't have much to play around. BZZ. I was about to say, you don't have auras, especially. That's your one aura now. Dead. They're going to go into a Cheshire Cat right now, trying to burn him down quickly. He decides not to try and TP out until the boat hits him in the face. So a fight well taken by the side of Unique. But only because Khan are split up. And this, this was what we were highlighting, right? It's like... They kind of expect these casualties. It's the point that they're pressuring everywhere else on the map. But quick move across from Unique. Arrow is good on 19 Teen. Is skewed away by Mio trying to make his escape. The dust will reveal him as he hits the Moonlight Shadow and he cannot blink away. They will be able to find Mio. Yeah, and finally things are starting to look up a little bit for, for Unique here. They're finding some very important kills to kind of help this PA snowball. Yeah, they might potentially even know. Look towards this Roche. There, there is a medallion already on this Kunkka. And yeah, it does look like they're going to be going, going for this here. With the with the Inner Beast aura, the medallion on the Kunkka, and just the damage from the the PA. Yeah, should would... be able to do this. However, this is... Not uh, that can't fast. Know about it. That's not fast enough. Cheshire Cat's arrive, but maybe base himself, but the Primal Roar comes out. And that is a tad bit too confident for an Underlord at this stage in the game. Yeah, this might just be another bonus kill onto the Underlord, and it's a Phantom Assassin now. And uh, yeah, the cool thing now is that when they get this Roche, uh, PA is going to be able to just buy it. Of course, she was going to go Deso regardless uh, before she goes into the DPD, but now the fact is you won't be so vulnerable because you're doing this. You're still going to be able to fight uh, just once you get this Desolator. You're just going to be very strong. You, you won't have to be so worried. And they're going to have some sort of timing there where Kilgir here might be in trouble. Uh, he's like, I got the rune. My life for gold. And yeah, your life will be converted to gold. There's, there's no escape there. And it, it's, it's kind of, ironically enough, it's critical this time for Unique, right? Everything has to start working out here because you saw the entirety of that, that expedition around the Roche pit. Naive never comes. He always stays bot because this anti-mage is still a one big fat item away from being ready to take the fight to you. Yeah, I mean, he realizes that he doesn't have to do like pretty much anything. I mean, joining these fights at this point, it's it can pretty much only hurt him, you know? Uh, the farm that you're going to get from just sitting down here and clearing all these camps, also applying pressure to this the tier 3 uh, eventually. If, if at some point you see a lot of heroes, you can just start hitting this. Or you just keep farming, you can even start cutting the, the mid, mid waves. And yeah, he's just going to sit here and be a happy camper. And now going into this mid tower here. PA porting in. Yeah, and that's the, the point where, you know, if, if that's a PA without an Aegis, potentially you think about trying something there. But that's a PA with an Aegis and now a completed Deso in a few seconds here. Really good you, read. You do have to respect it at least. Yeah, as I say, it's a really good read from Unique, right? They understand, okay, actually this mid tower right now is kind of choking Khan's ability to freely move across the map. So that is a priority objective to keep up. Yeah, definitely. Trying to hold on to this tier one as long as possible in the mid is... is... It is very nice for them. It, it lets them kind of... It makes it more difficult for Anti-Mage to, to keep splitting, you know, because you have a lot of towers to choose to port to. Yeah, the multiple points of contact. J4! Ugh, somebody doesn't want contact in this phase. The 
big crit comes out. 19 can now even clean up his army. It's much worse than losing your own life is when your children die before your very eyes. Oh my. So dramatic. It's, it's true though. Like if you never sit, you never heard it. If you've never had your read, children die before your eyes, <laughs> yeah, then you don't then know how what do you I'm know? About, okay. <laughs> you don't know you, anything. You've never experienced the darkness that exists in the world of Dota. You just see the happy smiles, the chirpy, hypey moments. But... I, I actually dreamt last night that I had a goldfish. Or I'm not sure if it was goldfish, but it was a fish that died. So, you know, it's not my children per se, but... I mean, that hurts you know, it was my. Much. Yeah. It's pets, I don't my know pet, better. Especially my, my a goldfish. Pet, pet fish. I, I did have a goldfish, though. It, it, it also died. I, did you I eat, think my did... grandma killed it. Uh huh. So, so she's a cat as well. I see. Yoga. No, she's just. I think she was just maybe a little bit clumsy, or she didn't like the fish. I'm not sure. Did she flush it down the toilet. And she accidentally. So I'm not really sure. She, <laughs> she accidentally, kind of, dropped a rock on it. What? It's her story. So. How do you accidentally drop a rock on something? Jesus Christ, then what are you like accidentally? Like, yeah, I don't want to openly admit it, but my grandma, she's a little bit of a psycho. She tends to throw rocks at a fish. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not entirely sure what happened, you know, my, but yeah. Like, 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 what's the overarching defense? I wasn't trying to kill her. I just wanted to trap his little tail under the rock and watch it squirm. Like, uh, <laughs> she's either a fish murderer or she's trying for some deeper, darker recourse here. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I, I've, I've never really asked her about, you know, like what happened that day with, with that fish there. So you, you just saw the mangled maybe, maybe fish corpse. Maybe You're like, I don't want to ask questions. Maybe, maybe it's maybe, maybe not knowing is better. I think she was sending you a message. Like you get, you get out of line when you're around mine, Poe, and you see what happens. Oh, shit. Quick in the rocks, we're going to see if the uh, spirit can rock Khan's world now as he's moving forward. The Moonlight Shadow is going to break there. Movement in, silence out. That's already the chain going on the side. Underlord has been found with the Primal Roar into the boat. The BKB RP turnaround coming in right now, but the disarm goes out of the air. He needs to back up a little bit. They do get the damage out from Chester Cat. Bring them low. Beastmaster already gone. The follow up kills under the Kunka should be successful, but he's taking his time to go down. GPK just skirting around the fight will mean the Underlord goes down first. The burns through, Vanscore trying to help. He has got the egg to play with. And 19 Teen has not been addressed. He stands his ground. He runs straight in. He kills the kitty cat lady, just like poor little pie cat's goldfish. Less yeah, of a rock, though, more of a probably, probably pretty much what happened there. You know, poor little fishy. And yeah, we could see in that fight there, a very nice uh, RP there by Mio. Onto, I think it was two or three targets there, but... Uh, Antimage goes in and he gets halberded uh, pretty much immediately, and he was not able to output as much damage as he had hoped, kind of. And this getting a bit uh, worrying, yeah. right? Like, we, we talked earlier, he had that moment where he got caught top when he should have had counter spell. That mm -hmm. one, you can maybe forgive a little bit more, he gets caught off guard, but usually when you blink in, you're looking for that instant counter spell to cover your initiation, right? No, for sure. I, I, I was a little bit surprised that he got caught about, out by it. I mean, he had both, like, the, the Manta and the, the counter spell to kind of use either one of those would have helped him. I'm also actually a little bit surprised that he is... I mean, once he gets the Abyssal, of course, it's going to be nice, not just for killing... You know, it's not just about the PA, right? It's about a lot of these other heroes, too, where you can jump on top of them. It's just... After this Abyssal, he's still going to need to go for this... Uh, probably for this MKB, just so that he can actually uh, cut down this PA. But now you see at least, like, 19 Teen, he's, he's caught up. He's... I mean, of course, he's still slightly behind in terms of net worth. However, in, when it comes to fighting capability, this, this PA is quite far ahead now. It's, it's very difficult at this point for, for Antimage to try to man fight this PA. Mm -hmm. It's like it's one of those things we, we talk about uh, in clear kind of basic terms when we talk about effective net worth, right? We usually mm -hmm. refer to uh, you know how much gold you have in the bank versus completed item. In but really, like, there's a I've second layer. Trouble is a strong one. Uh, Gilga is also in, in a slight little trouble land. He's able to get away. Cheshire Cat will also get away, as it looks like you need to get a little bit split. They do actually kill Gilga in the end. GPK. Don't throw the clap. But I, I think the point I was going to make around it is, is, you know, we talk about effective network as a direct show of, like, have you actually got your item or are you hold on to gold, right? What we mm -hmm. don't often get to talk about is, is how the heroes themselves use it. Right, which is like what you've been highlighting with with the the PA. I think the same can be said of Kunker as well. When you compare like Kunker Mag, Mag 
Kind of gets his value out of the fact he's able to amp other people's farm up. Kunkka's skill set and the items he builds just inherently make him a really frustrating target in the, in these fights. And then, of course, you know, the Beastmaster doesn't need much. If he's got a book and either a Vlad's or a Blink, he's happy. Yeah, no, Beastmaster, is, he's, he's just an aura bot, basically, with, with, with the books. Uh, he, he doesn't need much more. I mean, yeah, like, like I said, a Blink would be nice for uh, at some point to try to catch some heroes when they're farming. But yeah, he, he doesn't need much. Uh, Antimage does complete his Abyssal now, so he, he should be pretty much ready to fight. Uh, he still can't really man fight the PA. That's the thing, right? Like no. this PA with, it's it's fifty percent evasion. So man, man fighting, unless you're incredibly lucky, is is pretty much impossible. He might be forced to fight. Unique are going for this wrap oh, no. around. Anti mage. Oh, oh, oh he no! He actually got it that time. They're like, haha, This man never presses count. Oh, he found the button. Cheshire cat oh. sees all. Wants to take all. They might take him. No, oh, good god. One more tap and he'd be gone. 19 team waits for it when he comes down. Hanago trying to save the day. The RP can't get in. He's interrupted on the blink dagger. The axe is through. Ensure there is no follow up. And instead, Unalus want to go down. They did get their buyback out of Phoenix instantly. BCC on the side in a lot of trouble as well. As they'll cut and run and leave him behind. They are hunting forward, looking for more. But that should be all they get. Yeah, I mean, it's just uh, trading kind of offlaners there. However, Vanscore did buyback. Uh, kind of in anticipation of that fight. I mean, it was very, I, I, you know, maybe maybe fortunate is the wrong word, but it was uh, very important that he got that counter spell off there on that roar. Uh, he, he just blinked into, you know, like four or five heroes. They were all on top of him and he, he gets it off. And so because of the the pushback or the, you know, the side push there from from the, the countered roar, he, he manages to get out there. He's very lucky. If he had to pause in that very moment, you know he'd be down on his knees praying to God, saying he'll change the way he lives. He'll live a better life. But he didn't have to. Actually, you know what? That would have probably been one of those situations, uh, you know, where the person does the prayer and then something works right. out and they just don't change anything. Like, no, no. Right. All right. I ain't changing my life. I'm back to farming, boys. I need a Scotty next. Then then yeah. I'll be ready to fight him. Yeah, I mean, so he's going Scotty. Uh, he's still opting not to go for this FB. I mean, he just wants to get tank gear. Uh, I'm not even oh. sure. I... This number, number smoke play. Naive. Through. Jump in. Naive goes straight onto the Phoenix. He's trying to get that die back out. I mean, I don't have time for the egg if he needs to, but on the side, our spirit's already been brought down. But with the RP already expended, they need to actually get a lot more work done with these big ults from Khan. Egg does go off. That will reset the fight. So our spirit being dead, but Khan now missing that big initiation tool of the RP. GPK did use the boat. He needs to be careful himself. They're baiting him towards this pit, though. This could backfire very quickly. Khan. Jumping from Gilga. Moving out by 19 team. Buyback comes out from the Earth Spirit. BCC's been left behind, hung and dry. Will be brought down. Not sure that was the move Unique were looking for. And as a result, they may have just given Khan the keys to the pit. Yeah, the Pia there without the BKB, she, she's kind of scared of fighting. I mean, you can understand well, why. She's, she's going to be forced to. Jump in. Arrow is off the mark though, but it won't matter. They still find the kill. Now you have yeah, to I'm give not it sure how, I, I, I am not sure how you missed that arrow, but nonetheless, the PA still goes down now. No, no BKB, and this is going to be a very easy roll for Khan. And yeah, it's going to be ages on the end mage. And I mean, this lead is going to now get out of control very quickly here. Yeah, I'm just thinking back to where AM was sitting in comparison to 1910 before, right? Like, yeah, they were a thousand gold between them. But now you, by the time you got this PA back up, you're probably talking about like a 5k lead. Also now the Aegis are naive. And, and keep in mind... Also like, cheese on the Magnus. Yep. Which, keep in mind, that RP was used at the start of the fight, right? It was awkwardly used. And now they get past that awkward point where they'll be ready to fight again. And you can already see Unique or not. They lose Illusion as well. There's still a hunt going on. Naive wants more targets. The Torrent... Should cover fan score for the moment, but not long enough. The disarm just gets reflected on the Kunkka. The Yules will allow them to get in the base, but you can see how scary this AM is now. Yeah, now he he, he changes up his build and he goes into that towards that MKB. I, I like this decision. Now he's going to be able to to man fight the PA quite easily, thanks to this abyssal also, of course. And yeah, they're just going to pretty much take the entire map now. Was top. You can already see that BZZ is starting to shove out bot. He's like, okay, let's not have this lane be exposed well. Maybe we can force them back to their side, which you can see the TP rotation from a mag. So, Khan, let's take the time. 
coming along top. They've got plenty of time to work with on this Aegis. Really, the onus is on Ye uh, Unique to try and punish them while they're split. If they can. I don't know if yeah, you can just... actually. What's, what's, what's your entry target here? Yeah, it's very difficult for, for Unique kind of to find this fight here. Uh, they're going to be forced to fight. Be trouble. Doesn't want to pop the BKB. And he doesn't have the mana for a TP away now. Now, he might see that as a positive because he's not losing too much health. But the problem is when the bashes come out, the BKB serves now to save you as they'll just chase forward and look to bring him down. Hand of God. Wasn't even on the back line. Neo was being jumped by Tubi. Gets the RP out and skewers them back towards the big boys. AM is running across as quickly as he can. Mio is brought down by 1910 as he got bashed up before he could actually try and protect himself. But 19 now with the BKB going, looking to fight up against them. However, he gets bashed himself. They do bring down BZZ. And all of a sudden, it's 19 team versus the world. And the world is going to hit hard when it comes at you. Yeah, I mean, and at this point, I you know, there's just not much to be done here. I think uh, the, the Phantom Assassin, he can no longer fight this anti-mage. You know, thanks to courtesy of this previously mentioned MKB. A pistol also, of course, with the Paladin Sword on both sides. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, there's just not much to to do here for for Unique. They this anti mage has just he's gotten too big, and with the Aegis and and everything else, it's just they can't deal with this hero now. And we see how powerful they are when they get ahead, right? Like we mentioned, this the mobility that Khan has, uh, they're just able to hunt Unique across the map. It felt like the moment they got the this Aegis, it's just all of a sudden the submarine looking for cargo ships to blow up. But Unique are the unfortunate ones cruising through that ocean. Yeah, there's just, you know, there's there's no real way of fighting back, right? There's no, there's no kind of, like you said, entry target. There's no, you can try to take out these supports, but even that is not easy now. Chen has a go scepter and Murana just almost 2k HP. Sure, she could die very quickly to a PA, but I also it's... think uh, the impact from the, the Murana is, is she's just a spirit vessel. Uh, so you don't really need the Murana that much. That's the thing. The the value in these coconuts lies in all the cores, right? That's where yeah. the juicy milk is. But like, how do you crack these ones open? With the Crimson Guard on, on Cheshire Cat as well, not easy. Yours as well can buy so much time. And, and with that mobility, reinforcements always arrive before you close out one of these core kills. Yeah, I mean, at this point, basically, you just need to wait for this, this Aegis to be reclaimed. And uh, then you need to try to take this fight where, with, with this PA. Uh... Try to try to kill the anti-mage somehow. I mean, PA now queuing up a satanic. I, I really disagree with this. I think you just need to go all in for damage. I think maybe a rapier is kind of like your best or only choice here if you actually want to go for the win. If you even but, get that, uh, it's the problem, right? Because I, I don't, I don't see Khan giving them the time. Like they're bringing in the wave right now. They're closing out this area of the map, and you know they're not going to hesitate to go into the high ground. No, they're just gonna, they're just gonna go straight. Um, I am not sure exactly what the timer on that Aegis is. Oh, I think he's got 30 seconds left. Yeah, I mean, it's probably going to time out, but he's going to have at least six slots. I mean, the, the one thing is Entomage won't have buyback, so if they somehow miraculously manage to kill him, then it could be a little bit dangerous for Khan, but it seems very unlikely as PA does not have an MKB, so getting through that butterfly and the Entomage with, you know, there's this Crimson on the on the Lord, there's Vlad's on Chen and, and the, the Eels and Mech, yeah. and yeah, it's just... It's not going to be easy. It's also the easy resets, right? Like, you, you think about the amount of time you can buy in these fights with the roots, with the RP. Even if it's a straight arrow catches one of your supports. Like, Unique kind of needs every resource at their disposal to bring down the AM. So if any of that gets disrupted, your chances of winning that battle just kind of disappear. Yeah, I think those chances are not amazingly large to begin with. No, it's like my chances of getting a supermodel of the day. <laughs> maybe, hey, maybe if you if you if you cast like a lot of TIs and you become oh. you know really rich and famous then you never know thank you for decreasing my chances because I'd have to cast TI Gilga <laughs> he'll just wish to live another day he's not looking for anything like a super model oh, however the X allows him to move away reinforcements have arrived that buys enough time in the round to roll across to try and control up on a naive he should be able to blink away from this though and that egg is going to be wasted Cheshire Cat sidesteps, but that's not the entry target. Mio, there's the RP, drags towards Naive, and they prop it up to bring him down. With the Mana Void through, they're going to burn through the entirety unique. The Phoenix the has rampage. to run high Come and on. away. Come they on, want that it. Rampage. Give it to him. Fanso's like, no. 
I don't want him to have a morale boost. They already won the game. Just take that victory. He's not gonna get it. He's not getting it. Oh man. Ah. That hurts. That just hurts, you know. As... Okay. But but how does like in what way does that hurt? Is it the sting that like if you are there now and you're naive, you're like, I'm a wreck. You mourn game two. Or is it like, damn. Really want no, that. No, it hurts us to anti -mage. I really, yeah, I, I, yeah, that's like, what I'm I really right? wanted that. Rampage. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Denying him that rampage, that was a good move by by Vanskar there. That's smart. Uh, so, but... so that was the grand scheme. Vanskar planned to lose this game. Yeah, I mean, you saw that the the PA could still deal quite a bit of damage. You saw Naive was forced to blink away there, like during the silence and everything. Uh, the PA could still deal the damage to him. It's just with that RP coming out there. I mean, that that just kind of sealed the game. There was there was not much more to be. To be played of that game there. No, it, That's just it, gonna it, be a throw one. I mean it really shows like what we talk about, the sustainability, the 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 mobility, right? Like this PA that we said can hit so hard. We mentioned that Gilgar is just a spirit vessel, really. But mm -hmm. his role in that fight is literally just to waste as much time as possible because finally we managed to force Unique to come out of their base, which is what they've been dodging us on this entire time. But overall, well played by Khan. I mean like I think it does a big part of it comes back to what we keep talking about. Magnus simplifying the draft a lot, especially definitely, when you have these two definitely. comparatives. No, for sure. I mean, Magnus definitely helped out quite a bit. Uh, I think Unique, they, they they almost, I mean, they did make a comeback, right? They even, they even I think, I don't know if they were ahead in gold for, for a brief moment there. You don't have to be against the anti-mage. But they were, you know, they were in a position to win the game. Um, and then they just took that, the, it was just this one fight where it got out of control and the yeah, the enemies just pulls way too far ahead after that that rush and everything. Let's not forget that critical moment where uh, we did see anti mage remember how his his counter spell works. The, the remembering how counter spell works, yes, definitely is a big part. I I think it was that moment where um, the PA he used his PKB, but he didn't really find a target, and then they had to leave the fight. And then he eventually, they get caught by this uh, Mirana Invis. And oh, the PA yeah. just goes down, and then they just got the Roche and everything, and it just fell apart. Where well, Gilgo was cali uh, calibrating his arrows, I believe. That was mm -hmm. the fight, yeah. So, yep. overall, though, calm, good execution from them. Takes game one from the side of Team Unique. Now, when we began this, I, like, I, I remember the draft pie, Kat. You said, like, if you looked at the names, Team Unique, you kind of favored them a little bit. Has Khan impressed you, or do you think this is, like, very heavily on the draft that, that helped them secure this? Um, I, I, I would say that I think that it's kind of easier for Khan to play this game. Mm -hmm. However, I actually think that if it wasn't for the fact that the 19 team did this weird move where he traded his life for nothing and gave it away to Anti-Mage, I think he would have reached this battle group timing quite a bit earlier, and I think it could have been a different game. So it's kind of hard to say. I also feel like the, their laning rotations early on, I think they were kind of strange. I'm not really sure what the Earth Spirit was doing for the kind of the, the start of this game. I, I think he was kind of all over the place, not really, you know, finding a purpose. Um, so with that said, I, I do think that Unique definitely had, I mean, they had a they had a way to win this game. I, I just think that when you're playing against, I just think this Magnus Hero simplifies things uh, so much that it's just, it's, it's so easy for you to play. We'll have to see if Team Unique can find their purpose in game number two. Maybe it's just to pick a mag and make this an ironic mag wins all series. Uh, but we'll have to see that after a short break. Go get yourself a drink. And then when we return, we'll have game number two between Team Unique and Khan.